everyday life, we deal with incredibly challenging and complex acoustic environments on a regular basis. And as humans, the most challenging and potentially most important task we use our auditory system for is to understand each other and communicate with each other. So when this ability is compromised in some way, that can have a huge impact on a person's quality of life. Here in the Eaton Peabody Laboratories at the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Infirmary, we perform research to understand the biology of hearing and deafness. And a topic of particular interest in my lab is how the brain changes in response to hearing loss. One of the big surprises in our field from the last few years is that the spiral ganglion neurons that form the auditory nerve and not the sensory hair cells are among the most vulnerable elements in the inner ear to the effects of aging and noise exposure. As the nerve degenerates, our ability to detect sounds, even faint sounds, might remain normal. The problems show up when we ask our auditory systems to discriminate complex sounds, like speech, especially in noisy backgrounds. The bad news is that some degree of auditory nerve degeneration happens to pretty much everyone. We lose approximately a thousand of these cells per decade, just as a consequence of aging. People with extreme levels of nerve degeneration can often hear sounds but have trouble understanding them. From a basic research and a clinical perspective, we felt that it was critical to investigate the phenomenon at the level of the cortex because of its central importance to perception. We induce nerve degeneration in adult mice by applying a drug that specifically targeted type 1 spiral ganglion cells. And this allowed us to eliminate more than 95% of these cells that carry information from the cochlea to the brain. One month after this procedure, we found that the acoustic startle reflex, which is mediated by a brainstem circuit, was pretty much gone. But when we engaged the cortex with an auditory avoidance task, the same mice were by and large still able to detect sound at normal thresholds. There was clearly a discrepancy between what was happening at lower levels of the system and what we saw was happening at higher levels of the system. So in order to observe this directly, we made simultaneous recordings from the midbrain and the cortex in awake animals with implanted multi-channel silicon probes. Between one week and one month after denervation, there was a huge enhancement of sound responsiveness in both areas. This enhancement appeared to happen earlier and to a larger extent in the cortex. What really struck me in Anna's data was that responses in the cortex were not only enhanced compared to the one-week data, but they were enhanced relative to the baseline, the control data. We think that this recovery in the cortex underlies the ability of mice and humans with severe neuropathy to detect sounds at normal thresholds. Temporal coding is important to us because of how critical timing is in speech perception. So, for example, the difference between the initial consonants in the words tad and dad is found in a very small time window. So, if cortical neurons aren't able to somehow represent this really rapid timing difference, then speech processing, especially in a noisy situation, is going to become incredibly difficult. We recorded a human speaker repeating different speech tokens, and we resynthesized these tokens so that they were shifted up into the mouse hearing range. Then we were able to record responses in the brain while the mice were listening to the tokens. We used a template matching algorithm to try and categorize the speech sounds based only on the neural responses that we recorded. And we found that there was a persistent deficit in both brain areas even if we waited 30 days after the nerve degeneration. I think this study speaks to a signature complaint amongst people with hearing loss, which isn't that they have trouble hearing faint sounds, but rather that they struggle to hear what is being said in complex listening environments like the workplace or in social settings. Understanding the complete nature of hearing impairment will require scientists and clinicians to look beyond the ear and consider how the plasticity of the brain is both boosting and disrupting the representation of complex sounds. In order to really cure hearing impairment, we have to make sure that people can not only hear, but that they can understand, they can communicate and experience the things that are absolutely central to day-to-day -day life.